So we've called back out to Eastern Farms and I know Gareth is absolutely raging that he couldn't get over here himself this year because obviously he wanted to try out the 9RX and this year you have an 8RX as well. But um, how has the season been getting on for you? Well, first of all, yeah, it's good to see you back and uh, welcome back to uh, Eastern Farms. Um, yeah, no, it's been a very difficult year. We started off with a very difficult spring. Then the summer hasn't been too bad. It was quite hot. Then we had a lot of rain and then the summer's got colder and colder. And as you can see today, it's now cloudy and it's making harvesting quite difficult. Although there's plenty of dust there, what we're finding is the moisture is not coming down. So we've had to make a decision to start at 19% and really we want all our wheat at 15%. So we're having to do a lot of drying, which isn't ideal. And of course, the other thing is wheat only has three days where it's at its absolute optimum to cut. So basically it's a bit like going up an elevator. It sits there level three days, absolutely perfect. Prime combine, you know, goes absolutely fantastic. And then all of a sudden it just starts deteriorating like falling off a cliff. So when it's fit, we really need to go and uh, get it in as quickly as we can. Because obviously last year when we called out to you, you were actually in beans. Yes. But how are the combines getting on for you? Because obviously you're running the same, the, the New Holland and the class, same as you were last year. Yeah, they've both gone really, really well. Um, fantastic machines. It's very difficult, as I said last time, to decide between the two. I think if I was to swap a combine, either of them today, it would come down to uh, price, you know, but I still do lean towards the New Holland. If you notice, the New Holland's always, just at the end of the day, he's getting away all the time from the class. Um, so yeah, I, I was still, still for the New Holland, but it, the difference isn't really a lot. So it would come down to money really. Yeah. And then one thing that obviously has changed here You've gone from the 7310R that was on the chaser bin to the 8RX. Yes, yes. So what we were finding is um, the 7310R, it's a lovely tractor and we, we spec'd it with the 900 tyres. But what we were finding is when we were in the field and it say it was difficult drilling and, you know, it was hard going, we found that the traction became an issue because we bought the tractor with no weights on it, no rear wheel weights to get as light a footprint as possible, but getting traction was hard work with it. So we decided that we needed to do something different. So we demoed the 8RX and it was an instant decision made. So we ordered one there and then, and the difference is just unbelievable. And uh, as you probably notice, if you look, this is heavy clay here. We've had a lot of rain this summer. The soil's quite soft. And where the tracks go of the 8RX, you can't see where it's been. It's just fantastic. And that's why we bought that tractor for the chaser bin. People think to me, why are you doing that? So if you've got a 20 ton trailer now and drove on here, our trailer tires are 650 tires. The tractors are all on 650 tires, but a 20 ton trailer load of wheat would leave a far bigger imprint on this soil than that chaser bin with 30 ton on it and that tractor and the tractor's what, probably 15 ton, and the bin, you know, it, it's a lot of weight, and it, yet it's still a lighter footprint. They're 710 tires on the bin, so yeah, there's six, six wheels and tires, so you're spreading that weight. We let the tire pressures right down as low as we dare, and uh, we get a nice, long, light footprint, which is what we want. Look after the soil. I know when Isaac was speaking to me about getting on that 8RX, he said he couldn't believe it was true until he actually got here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think my wife and myself, we did chat about this, going to put somebody, on, you know, a student on it, and my wife's like, is that wise? But uh, luckily it's paid off, because uh, to be fair to him, he takes his boots off, he's got a bit of carpet in there, he's got all the chrome polish and everything, you know, and he, if he gets a spare minute, you'll see he's polishing the tractor. It's, it's still like a brand new tractor, so... Um, you know, he's done really well. And to be honest, he's, he's really got to grips with making that Richard Weston work well. You know, he, know, he can see the lights on the combine, he can plan it. The two combines are like that. He'll fill off the first combine, he'll stop, waits for the second one, in comes the bin. And we find that chaser bin has really transformed the job because when we were unloading into trailers, what we found was that's a big auger 
out there and there's a lot of grain coming out very quickly especially in that class yeah that i mean that yeah that's for a ctf so that's a uh, for 12 meter tram lines yeah so what we were finding when you were trying to fill a trailer, you're pulling back on the joystick of the combine. Whereas now, because it's a 30 ton bin, you just unload and you don't look at the bin. You just concentrate on making that combine perform at its best. And it, you know, it does work really well. And then of course, by the time the trailer gets back in the field, he turns around and the chase had been straight there, full. And it, you know, within minutes, he's gone again. None of this tractors and trailers driving up and down the field, compacting the soil. It works really well. Fantastic. by Irish here at the moment. No, they're great lads. They're fantastic lads. And, and uh, this year in particular, I think we've got probably one of the best teams we've ever had. You know, the, uh, we just find that uh, the lads that are here this year, nothing's too much trouble. They're really happy to be here. They're really enjoying the experience of driving the big machinery and the new machinery. And, uh, you know, you can see this is a 50 acre field that we're in, 20 hectares, and they just like the big open spaces. And, you know, it's a nice team. Everyone works well together, and if they're happy, I'm happy. If they're not happy, you know, I'm like, what's wrong? What can we do? So, yeah, it's going well. You've got the two balers working on the back of your John Deere's. It's a New Holland and a Massey. Yes. That must be a mad kind of the season for you as well. Yeah, <laughs> Trying yeah. to keep up behind all of these. Uh, well, it, what you find um, now, as you can see, the balers are just over the hedge there, and they're working right behind the combines now, so that, that's working really well. And uh, then, of course, because as fast as we're combining, we're baling and shifting the straw now, and the 9RX is coming up behind with a six meter top down, and we're doing a good job, you know, we're doing 100 acres a day uh, with a cultivator, uh, probably as much as the combines are doing, say 200 acres a day, we're baling and chasing. Uh, so all angles covered. <laughs> it's all covered, it's all covered. <laughs> and yeah, hope I hopefully we'll earn a pound at the end of it. <laughs> That's the idea anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then Bale Chaser as well. You were running a Heath when we came out last year. It's still a Heath this year, but she's slightly different. Yeah, so we've gone, um, our old Chaser, believe it or not, is a good piece of kit in its day. So that was a 2006. In those days, your bale was probably 500, 550 kilos in weight. 
and the chaser worked well and it was strong enough. And that was on springs, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just in the past now, it's historic. Whereas now we're on, this new chaser now is on air. It's a lot stronger and the bales are more like 680, 700 kilo bales. That's a big difference in yeah. weight. And uh, it's also a far better ride for the operator. It's not throwing him about. It goes over a rough tram line or something because some of the tram lines are bad this year. And we're finding that the bales ride better when he's loading. Yeah, it's great. It's transformed the job. Touching back on would say how you started off, you're still running a few diggers as well. That yes. was one thing that you touched on last time, but it's nice to see you've, you've got a new 140X. Yes, yeah. Um, which we spotted out land leveling this morning. Now, do you get to take a spin in her very often or do you leave it up to the other boys? Well, yes, sorry about this, Jeff, but I actually got in it this morning. I said, right, Jeff, rather than me try and explain, just uh, have a minute. <laughs> this is how I'd like it to look. And he was like, got you. And Jeff jumped in and, it, you know, you saw him on there. He's a good lad. He's got the hang of it and he absolutely loves driving it. And, it, and, it, and it's really good for me as well. So I might not need the second corn cart till 11, 12 o'clock in the day. So Jeff's on there seven o'clock in the morning. He's cracking on, ditching, leveling roadways out, you know, spreading soil. And then when I need him on the tractor, he's straight back on it, you know. Yeah, so you've got to keep him busy. It, it, well, <laughs> it, it works well. It works well. Um, yeah, but it's brilliant to see, obviously, because I know that was kind of where you started out was with the diggers and yes. it's nice to see it still coming through in the business yes you know? yeah. um but no it's been absolutely brilliant getting back out and seeing the operation again and seeing what has changed and what's kind of still working well for you it's absolutely been brilliant to be back out and seeing the combines in action yes yeah no but thanks a million for having us back out again Charles. you're very welcome and I hope to see you guys soon brilliant